Hello and welcome to Vidra Embedded channel and also welcome you to the series of video tutorials on getting started with TIR task kernel. So in this series of video tutorials, I'm going to teach you how we can work with the uh, TIR task kernel. As part of the series of video tutorials, uh, today uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to discuss about the general R task concepts. So it's all the more important to understand the, the general concepts of R task. Oh, let's get started. So basically we need to understand what is an R task. So RTAS is nothing but a real-time operating system. Basically, it's an OS intended to serve the real-time application where it processes the data as it comes in. So basically, what we call this typically without uh, buffering delays. With minimum latencies, it should serve the data that is comes into the application. And the second thing is that the key factor in RTAS are the minimal interrupt latency. That means it should process the interrupts in with very less time and also the minimum thread switching latency that means in our task uh, the thread switching will be there that means it will switch the execution from one task to another task okay so that should be very minimal a any our task uh, like you know whether it could be a ta our task or free our task um, so this is one of the key factor that an our task should provide to an application developer and the third point is an our task allows an application to be structured in manner that scales as more application as a system features to be added so as you keep on uh, like you know add on more or more and more features to an application it should provide a, a structured manner to understand the application the flow what is happening in the uh, the uh, real time application next what are the different uh, goals of an atas uh, so the following are the different goals of an atas so it should provide a small latency that's what we discussed about it because it is a real time after all. Okay. So in real time, it should execute the, the task, the minimal latency when the data is uh, comes into the application. And the second one is the determinism. That means again, it's a real time. So the determinism means it should maintain the, the deadlines. So whenever, for example, you take an example, whenever an interrupt occurs, okay, and irrespective of this execution it should process the interrupt the reason being is so interrupts are the high priority terms of the uh, processing the data so you, you need to know how long the things to take the process to make the sure the deadlines are met okay so whenever you give a command uh, to execute certain things so the your author should be able to process that uh, command and then corresponding actions needs to be proceeded so then the third one is the structured software with an R task you are able to divide and conquer the structure manner and it of course it's a straightforward to add additional components into an application so in R task each and every part of an application will be maintaining in terms of a task and then scalability an R task must be able to scale from a simple application to the complex application as i said so you may you might be start with a simple application but eventually it will grow to a, a larger application so your R task should be able to support that also for example in terms of a driver level you might have a requirement where you need to add additional features with respect to a file system or with respect to a networking then your R task should be able to um, support this so this is what we call it as a scalability then offload development again R task manages many aspects of the system which allows a developer to focus on their application so for example uh, basically R task provides a um, scheduling mechanism to execute the task okay one after the other so and uh, apart from that it will also uh, handles the power management interrupt table management memory management and the exception hand and so let's move on so the scheduler uh, people also called as a kernel so both are same the kernel is the heart of any rtos so basically what the responsibility of the kernel is to manage the task uh, based on the kernel or scheduling algorithm so there are two main ways a scheduler can manage this okay so basically with the scheduling algorithms it will manage the task okay so one of the most widely used uh, scheduling algorithm is the preemptive scheduling which means that preemptive means highest priority task will run first always okay so for example in your application you might have isrs okay so whenever it sees an isr uh, though it is running a low priority task it should switch to the isr because isrs will be given as a highest priority application and the second one is the high priority thread becomes ready. Uh, so this means in this case, the high priority thread will be preempts the low priority thread. So as I said, okay. And the third one is thread gives up the processor while waiting for a resource. 
okay so we you can use the uh, the sleep uh, to wait a particular task to uh, wait for a particular resource so sometimes what will happen means okay um, so you you might be like you know depending on the one of the um, outcome from the other uh, task okay so for that you can wait right so you can uh, with the help of the uh, the kernel uh, you can uh, wait your task until you get the resource from the other task entire this series of video tutorials i am going to focus only on the preemptive schedulers okay and maybe probably after we finish with this series of video tutorials on uh, the preemptive scheduler uh, with the uh, all the features that are provided by the tr task kernel so then i will also do one or two video tutorials on how to use the time slice scheduling so basically time slice scheduling it guarantees that each thread or the task is given to a slot to execute it and this type of a scheduling is generally is not recommended for the real time applications okay and the tr task kernel do supports this time slicing scheduling algorithm okay but as i said so throughout this video tutorial we are going to use the preemptive scheduling so now it is all the more important to understand okay uh, so what is the difference between the bare metal versus the atas so we are all know uh, how bare metal uh, programming uh, look like okay so in the bare metal programming you will have a main and you will have all the initializations with respect to gpios or adcs whatever the um, the hardware that you are going to configure in your application and then you will have one infinite loop uh, where you have the state machines or you, you have a series of function calls which will be executed one after the other for example you have it you know two functions the one is for adc and the other one is for lcd so it will be called one after the other okay first adc task will be executed if you call that in the uh, first in the while loop and then eventually it will update the like you know lcd this kind of uh, uh, execution we call it as a method of execution we call it as a polling method so that means the lcd task will only be updated once the adc task is completed that way and of course we will also have the isrs okay in the bare metal okay and then uh, whenever isr occurs so the cpu execution will switch to isr and then uh, again it will come to the while loop the, the, that is nothing but the infinite loop so the disadvantage of bare metal programming is you will have a delays in terms of execution of the functions okay and uh, one function need to wait for the other function to execute so when it comes to a minimal atas okay so where in the main you will have initialization to the hardware uh, so that will not change any okay and then you will have a bias start uh, so this is one of the function call or api uh, to start the bias in the uh, the kernel in the tr task okay so we will uh, look into this when we move on to the actual tr task concepts okay and then you will have one ideal loop okay so you can use this only ideal loop with the minimal atas right we are talking about you can use that ideal loop because the ideal loop will only execute when there are no other tasks are running in the um, in your application so you can use that ideal loop application uh, ideal loop uh, task okay and you can develop this as the same machine uh, state machine here and then it will also process the one after the other okay the whatever the function calls that you have there in the um, the ideal loop okay and of course isrs will be the same whether it is a bare metal or it, it could be the minimal atas okay so when it comes to atas with tasking what it differs is apart from the minimal uh, atas the things that we've seen here okay where you have the main function and the initializations and also ideal loop okay and so you will have the um, the hardware interrupts which is similar to the isrs apart from the uh, hardware interrupts you will also have the tasks okay so th basically the task is the basic entity of any uh our task the task you can implement whatever the functions you want you can also create the binary semaphores or mutexes whatever uh, the features that are available in a particular our task okay and these things will be handled by the your kernel okay and the based on the scheduling algorithm the task will be switched to one after the other okay based on the priority and then it will execute the application then coming to the execution of the threads by an atas okay um so as i said uh, in the previous slide so we are going to use the uh, preemptive scheduling algorithm okay so what it mean by preemptive scheduling algorithm means uh, so let's talk about this timing diagram so once the bias starts and in the y axis you see the priorities mentioned the priorities are uh, increase it from low to high the ideal task will have the lowest priority uh, whereas the isrs will be given as a highest priority okay 
and you will also have a mid priority a mid priority b and the high priority task okay how an r task will execute uh, these uh, tasks based on the preemptive scheduling we will look into it currently there is uh, you see at this time frame we, there is no interrupt occur so that is the reason why it the bias or the kernel or the scheduler whatever the way you call okay so it will switch to the high priority task okay and it is executing as the green color uh, indicates that it's an executing that means the task is running so at this particular time okay we see an isr and uh, the isr is uh, have high priority than compared to the this high task okay and then immediately the scheduler will switch the execution from the high priority task to the isr okay and it will execute once the um, isr finish its execution again the scheduler will switch to the next high priority level task okay that is the high uh, this one so it will execute the remaining part okay and then again it sees like you know like you know there is another task called mid a okay and it will switch to the mid a and it will execute but when it is executing a mid a task what happened is uh, so the uh, mid b task comes into the picture for the execution so then the scheduler will look into the priority of the mid a and mid b and obviously mid b is having a high priority than compared to the mid a and then it will uh, the execution will eventually switch to the mid b and it will execute it and after executing the mid a still it is not uh, like you know completed its execution okay and it sees that there is another high priority task comes into picture then the mid b will go into blocked state i would say like you know mid b is going to be preempted okay and then uh, the high priority task will execute again when high priority task is executing again you see another isr okay and then eventually the scheduler will switch to high priority task that is isr and then it will execute the isr and then eventually it jumps to the high priority task and it it finishes its execution and then it will comes to the mid priority b and it will finish the execution again it will go to the mid priority a and it will start executing the mid priority a task and then it finishes the execution and you see at this point of time we don't have any other tasks uh, to execute for example you don't have an isr you don't have a high priority task mid a or mid b so when there is no other task running like you know required to run an application okay and if scheduler sees that situation what it will do is it will eventually go to the the lowest priority task that is the ideal task so the ideal task basically used for the to reduce the power consumption by putting the your microcontroller into sleep mode okay and uh, as long as if there is no task is running okay and then kernel switch to ideal task and then it will be executed and once it sees any high, any other high priority task than the ideal task then your kernel or the bias or the scheduler will switch to that high priority task and it will start executing so this is how the preemptive scheduling algorithm works in an r task so any r task like you know whether it could be a tr task or it could be a free r task which implements this algorithm the like you know the method of execution will be the same i hope you understood then the com uh, like you know the question comes into the picture is is a kernel absolutely necessary okay so it's again uh, like you know it depends on the application okay so you can also write an application uh, without a kernel as long as you maintain the scheduling which means that okay how the task needs to be executed in a bare metal programming uh, as long as you see your application is very simple okay and then you can uh, like you know write your code or application um, using a bare metal you don't require a kernel okay so but the only thing that you need to take care of is in the in the options of kernel a scheduling decisions are made when the code is written so this needs to be taken care of by the application engineer okay uh, okay so a kernel can be seen as a, a portable and intelligent scheduling framework okay as i said in the bare metal programming you need to decide which task needs to be run okay uh, like you know that scheduling mechanism you need to implement while developing an application but whereas uh, a kernel based application or an r task based application is intelligent enough in terms of scheduling uh, because the framework itself provides that mechanism uh, to scheduling so all the way all the thing that you need to do as a um, application engineer is like you know how to uh, like you know manage your tasks that's all okay so the rest of the things will be taken care of by the kernel finally so as long as your application is very simple and you don't see a much complex in your application then you can 
uh, write the bare metal programming and as long as you see that your application is going much complex okay in terms of the features and obviously you cannot go with the this super loop concept so which is nothing but the the infinite loop concept okay where it involves a lot of delays okay so to avoid that situation and uh, uh, to execute uh, your application uh, in a well uh, planned manner so you can go for the kernel based applications of course when you use the kernel based application uh, so there will be compromise in the memory you need a more memory than compared to the the bare metal application so that's all for this tutorial um, so if you like this video so please do subscribe to my channel and then for latest updates please hit the bell icon and thanks for watching it